Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use instafeed.js on your website. Um, instafeed.js is a JavaScript plugin which will allow you to integrate your own Instagram feed on your website directly and it allows you to customize it and make it look good however you want it to look. Um, as you can see in the examples below, if we click on this example, you'll notice that this person has got the Instagram feed on their website. It looks pretty slick, pretty easy to uh, navigate. And if we click on an image, it actually takes you to the picture on Instagram. Um, and the beauty of this is now when this person adds an image to their Instagram page, it will automatically come up on their website without them having to edit their website, which is kind of cool. Um, this example, this guy's actually put the uh, Instagram feed on a nice carousel, which is quite cool. So you can see how easy it is to customize this plugin. But what I'm going to do today is just show you a basic way how to integrate it on your website and then we can go from there. Um, so the first thing you need to do is we just need to set up a new folder. Um, as you can see, I have a blank project here and I'm going to create a new index.php file. Okay, and I'm going to put the HTML uh, scaffolding. So it's uh, just a standard HTML5 document and we'll save it and we'll call it... Uh, Instagram feed test and uh, inside there what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put div ID equals insta feed because I've done it before I know that the insta feed JS plugin will actually look for this div and then it will place all the images in there so that's uh, the first step now we have the document set up we actually need to download insta feed.js so what we do is we right click on this uh, download button, save the JS file onto our computer. And you can ob obviously, uh, I've already got it on my desktop, see? Um, you can obviously use Bower or any of those, uh, any of those uh, tools if you'd like, but I'm just gonna do it the plain, simple way. And we'll just create a new folder called JS and we'll drag instafeed.min.js into there. So now if we go to our project, you'll notice we have a JS folder which has instafeed.min.js and index.php. So let's connect this script with our page. Let's go script source equals JS folder and then we do instafeed.min.js. And so that's set up. And if we actually go to our site, you'll notice that in our source, we have instafeed.min.js and it's located there. So that's, uh, that's connected. Now what we need to do is we need to tell instafeed.min.js to actually show a specific feed. So to do that, the best way to do it would probably be create another JS file where we can put all the custom stuff in. So let's create another one. I'm just going to copy that and call it custom.js. And I'm going to right click here and create a new file and save it as custom.js. So I'm going to copy and paste a bit of a script that I have prepared earlier just to save time because I want this to be nice and simple for you. Now I've pasted that into the custom.js uh, file and this basically is the options that are for the Instagram.js or instafeed.js program and it will basically tell instafeed what user to grab the images from and also an access token which just secures your Instagram so no one can just display your feed from any website they want. So let's go and get the user ID and the access token. Now to get the user ID, we actually need to go to a web, well, we, you can do it a few ways, but the easiest way I found is just go to, go to this website, which is called smashballoon.com, and you can get your Instagram feed from there. I'm gonna use a customer of mine. I'm gonna use their ID. Um, so it's the Victorian Bathroom Company, and I'm gonna get the user ID here. So that's nice and easy. We've got the user ID now and I'm going to paste it in user ID, oops, and now we want the access token. So to get the access token, we can go to another website, which is called instagram.pixelunion.net, and click generate access token, and it's doing it because 
I'm already logged into my Instagram. So if you're already, lo already logged in on your computer, it will automatically show it. Otherwise, it will just ask you to log in so that it can get it. Now that I've got the access token, I'll paste it in there and hit save. Now let's go to our website and let's see if anything loads. If we actually go there, we hit refresh, nothing's happening. And let's find out why. So if we go to inspect, you'll notice that there is a dollar, dollar sign is not defined, which basically means we need jQuery. So I stuffed up there. We need to actually put jQuery on the website so that this plugin can work. So to do that, let's just look up jQuery and I'm just going to use a CDN so that we load it nice and quickly. Let's just get the latest version of jQuery and we'll go back to our index.php and we'll load jQuery at the start here. Script source, oops, script and something stuffed up there. What was it? Yeah, it was just this. Okay, and there we go. Let's go back to our pro project now and if we refresh, there you go. So now we have currently got 12 images displaying. Um, so it's working. When we click on one, it will actually just show the image and we don't want it to look like this. We want it to look a bit better. I think uh, it would look better if we had it in a row, row of fours and we, sh we display 12. So to do that, the best way to go about this would be to use Bootstrap. So let's go to Bootstrap and grab Bootstrap and integrate it into our project. So let's go to Bootstrap 4 Alpha CDN and we'll copy this CSS file, go into our head and we'll do link rel equals, oops, style sheet. And we'll grab, don't worry about Bootstrap JS, that's all we need. Refresh the page, everything's exactly the same. Let's put a container around our div. And we'll also give InstaFeed a class of row so that we can then specify each image to be a column size and then it can be displayed in rows. So if we refresh this now, it will actually show in, in a container. Now let's go back to our custom JS file and assign a class to our images. So this is the template area. This is basically what dictates each image to look like. Um, let's do col lg 4r4 and refresh that. If we refresh the page now, you'll notice that it's actually in a row of three. So we're gonna do col lg3 and save it. And it will display nicely like that. And then what we want to do is probably put a bit of a gap underneath these images. So let's go to our index and we'll create a new style sheet. And we'll put it in a CSS folder. Okay, and the we can let's just call the give this another class of insta image. Okay, so each image will have a class of insta image, and we will do image margin bottom 30 pixels. Let's go back here now and refresh, and that didn't work. Why not? Let's have another look. I'll just refresh it again. Ah, there we go. I just had to do a hard refresh. So now we have four images in a row. When you click on that image, it will take you to just the image itself. Um, I think it could look better if we make it so that if you highlight over the image, the opacity changes so you know you've actually highlighted that image. So let's try that. Let's go to our style sheet and do Insta image, image hover, opacity 0.8 moz opacity 0 0.8 and webkit opacity 0 0.8 and refresh the page again and now when you highlight over it it loads up pretty nicely 
let's give our uh, actual page a bit of padding at the top. So padding top uh, 10BH. So that take, gives it a bit of padding. Actually, let's do 5BH. There we go. And the last thing I think to make it look even better would be to actually use a lightbox plugin so that when you click on the image, it loads it in a lightbox and it just gives it that extra bit of customization and, and user experience. The best way to go about it would probably be to use Magnific Pop-Up. And if we go onto Google and we type in Magnific Pop-Up, you'll see a cool website that shows you how the plugin, uh, show you how it works here. So click on one of the images here and it will display the image really nicely in a light box and you can kind of go back and forth, which is really, really cool. So let's, let's install that. We'll go to GitHub and we will go to uh, distribution here and we'll download magnificpopup.css. I'll just grab the CSS here and let's go into our CSS folder and save that magnific.css and let's include it into our index file. And then we just need to grab the JS file as well. Look, there are a lot of ways to do this. You can use uh, Bower or NPM, I'm sure. Uh, I'm just doing it the real old school way, just so to keep it nice and simple. I'm also going to download the JS file. Actually, which one should I get? Uh, probably get the minified version. Go to raw, copy that, go back here, go to our JS, click create a new file, paste it in, then call it magnific.min.js. And then we just need to include this on our project as well. Magnific.min.js, cool. So if we go back to our page and refresh it, and we look at the actual source, there's no errors here, which is good, which means that they're all working. Um, now, let's set up Magnific to work with this. So we'll go back to the Magnific site, and we'll go to documentation. And what we want to do is we want to set up a gallery. So we'll go to gallery. And uh, the probably the best way to go about this would be to copy this. Let's copy that. Go back to our files and go to custom.js and then add this into our custom.js file. I'll call it gallery. And we'll now go up here uh, to our index.php file and add gallery as a class. Now if we refresh that, what should happen now is when we click on the image, it actually should load the image in that particular light box, but it's not doing it right now. So I'm just going to figure out what's going on there. Okay, all we need to do to make it work now is go back to our JS file and add this little snippet here, which is delegate A, which basically tells it to uh, target the anchor file or the anchor uh, tag, and that will display the image. So now if we actually refresh the page and we click on one of the images, you actually notice the image will come up with the description and the tags that you've typed in on Instagram uh, underneath it and it keeps everything on your website so people aren't clicking and going back to Instagram coming back to your website it just gives them a very seamless experience now you notice the images are quite small here and you might want to make them larger the only problem is that with this particular plugin it only gives you three options you have thumbnail low resolution standard resolution we've got it set to standard resolution so the images are showing at the largest possible size that we can get them so unfortunately uh, we can't make them any bigger um, but with that being said it still looks pretty good and uh, 612 by 612 pixels uh, is the largest you can display it it's better than nothing i guess the last quick thing i'll show you is that if you actually want these images to just display 
go to directly to Instagram to that image actually on Instagram what you can do so we go back to the project and all we have to do is instead of it linking to the image to go to the link and uh, we also just need to go to index and take away this magnific pop-up class and if we refresh it now if you go if you click here it will actually take you to that image on Instagram so that's it I hope this tutorial has helped you and you can download this uh, project from the description below um, leave any comments uh, hopefully some positive ones thanks and have a great night